It's high school boys basketball action tonight on WOSN. We are here at the Vatican, the home of the Delphi St. John's Blue Jays, and a great one for you here tonight. The Blue Jays hosting the Elida Bulldogs. We look forward to a great matchup here tonight on WOSN. Good evening, everyone. I'm Patrick Hamler. Joined alongside me, Josiah Stover, and this should be what we hope is an outstanding matchup tonight. Elida coming into the contest with a two and one mark. Delphi St. John's unblemished so far and looking for another win. They had a win over Elida last year and they're looking to repeat that again this year. Yeah, both teams coming in uh, having tough games last night as we look at Elida pulling off the one point victory over Spencerville, a quality win to start the year. And as you said, St. John's 2-0 and on the year coming in with an overtime win over Kaleida last night, a 60-54 contest so both teams should be a great matchup tonight interesting to see how that kind of intensity plays out onto your saturday night contest i know uh, one of the things i hear from coaches a lot is you know sometimes it's hard to get the guys up for a saturday game the, the intensity is not quite there but i'll tell you what looking at the floor right now looking at the lighter looking at st john's look at the crowd here the kids are into it uh, this is a great environment here on saturday night yeah i think the fans have brought the intensity tonight i imagine the players are all feeling it here and uh, i can see all the players ready to go yeah JV contest was very close. St. John's came from behind to win that one tonight, 46-45. And we'll see if any of that translates as St. John's getting their final instructions as they head to the court. Of course, uh, all eyes will be on Cameron Elwer, the 6'1 sophomore, averaging 29 points a game so far this season. Joel Schrader there for the Blue Jays, tipping it off against Parker Krim, and it is controlled by the Bulldogs as we are underway here at the Vatican. The uh, Blue Jays come out in a man-to-man -man defense and a quick shot here. Dory Island, three-point shot is no good. Second chance opportunity for the Bulldogs. Coming strong is David Escorn, and he lays that one up and in. Yeah, strong take up there by David Escorn. Is he Good shot fake, drives to his right and makes the easy layup. Blue Jay basketball, uh, Elwer working strong and can't quite get the finish. Ball going out of bounds and into the crowd. And Elida showing that they are fired up and ready to go. Elida basketball following the exchange. Mari Wash averaging a little around nine points again here in the early going. Here's Etzcorn from downtown, and that three-pointer is good, and Elida off to a quick 5 nothing start. Yeah, good start here by this Elida Bulldogs team coming out, firing, not being shy to shoot from behind the arc here. David Etzcorn, five quick points for this Bulldogs team. St. John struggling from behind the arc last night in their matchup against Kaleida. Only three for 20 from downtown in last night's contest. We'll see if that was an aberration or there are some problems there. That first three-point shot attempted by Andrew Elwer is no good. And quickly back the other way come the Bulldogs. Yeah, good box out there by Edscorn as he's able to corral the ball for his Bulldogs. An opportunity for them to extend this early lead. Trying to work it down low to Krim. Krim double team, nice spin move, puts it up with the left hand, a little too strong. Rebound there by Joel Schrader. Elwer thought about it, kicks it back out to Andrew Elwer. Working it back around, and we're going to have our first foul of the contest as Zori Island picks up his first. What will be and what has been a hotly debated and discussed topic are the changes of the foul rules in high school basketball this year. Instead of uh, seven fouls per half for a one-on-one -on -one and ten for uh, two shots, now in the fifth foul of each quarter, teams will be allowed to shoot two foul shots, and that resets at the end of every quarter. And so far, the opinions have been mixed. Let's just say that. Yeah, I agree. I think it depends on who you talk to, if they, they like the new change or just like the how it was for years upon now. But we got another, looks like, foul here. And I believe that's going to be number two on Zori Island. Yeah, that's going to be the second on Island. So he is going to head to the bench here early on, get some coaching from head coach Matt Tabler. Checking in is going to be Jackson Koval, number 13. 
Also checking in Aaron Minter for the Blue Jays. Joel Schrader will have a seat. Now Elwer in control. Working it around, corner three by Elwer is no good. That's scoring with the rebound. So far, not a lot of second chance opportunities for the Blue Jays on offense. Good ball movement. Here's Amari Wash from downtown. That one off the front, back of the iron, no good. Elwood brings it across the timeline now. He'll try his own three-pointer and it's splashed down. Yeah, it was only a matter of time before Cameron got a shot he wanted. And Seth Sharp was there, but gave him a little bit too much space. And Cameron was able to knock down the big three. And Cam's one of those guys that probably has the green light pretty much all the time. Had an outstanding freshman year, really established himself as one of the, the best players on the team and one of the leaders. Now here is Elida, and that nice answer by Amari Wash as he knocks down the triple. It's eight to three, Bulldogs. And we'll have a foul on the other end. And I think they're gonna get Seth Sharp with the foul. That's his first, team's third. Looks like Jackson Koval has now switched with Seth Sharp to guard Cameron Elwer. So we'll yep. see the strategy played out here by Coach Tedler tonight on guarding him. Cutting inside and another foul is, that's gonna be Sharp again. So Sharp picks up his second. So he will head to the bench. Even Jackson will check in for the Bulldogs is getting some early players off the bench is head coach Matt Tabler because of foul trouble. And that one out of bounds. And the ball will go back to the Bulldogs. And as you said earlier, Elida already has four fouls here in this first quarter. Won't be long before St. John's will be shooting some free throws here in the quarter. It's the next foul for the defensive foul for the Bulldogs, and that will put St. John's at the free throw line. 4.17 remaining in the first quarter. Of course, as we mentioned, the fouls will reset at the end of the first quarter as that shot by Cobalt doesn't hit anything. Krim fighting underneath, and he's fouled. Yeah, Krim doing a good job there early, trying to get position, was able to the backside of that shot, corralled the rebound, kept his feet in good position and went up and got fouled. That's the first foul on Aaron Mentor, his team second. And that puts Krem at the line, the sophomore. And the Leeds fans recipe chicken free throw is no good. Second one on the way for Krem is good. Lee's free throw up and in, 9-3 Bulldogs. We are just about halfway through the first quarter. Wide open three ball on the way for Tice McLean. That's no good. And quickly back the other way comes Elida. Stop, drop, and count it for Amari Wash. Yeah, Amari Wash off to the races after that. Defensive rebound, takes it and see, and saw they had some numbers going forward and a good jump stop there and draw some contact and opportunity for an old-fashioned three-point play. Braden Kloss assessed the foul, the 5'11 sophomore, and that puts Amari Watt to the line. And this Lee's famous recipe chicken free throw is good, and they do complete the old-fashioned three-point play. A 12 to three lead for Elida. And Cobalt almost poking that away from Elwer. Here's Kloss from downtown, and he gets that one to go. Stops a 7 0 lighter run, and Cobalt back the other way quickly, and an offensive foul. Cobalt assesses his first, and that will put Elida over the limit, so. Free throws from here on out, at least for the final 331 of this quarter for St. John's. Defense! 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 
be interesting to see if maybe they try to get a little more aggressive going into the lane. Well, you know, something like that. Ken Elwood is your guy. That team read that ball screen and saw that the defender didn't hedge and was able to take it right to the rim for an easy two. Now Etzcorn taking it strong. Elwood pops it out. It's a race and Krim wins. Cobalt dribbles back, takes a quick look at the bench. And we'll reset the offense, 2.49 to go in the first quarter, four point lead for Elida. Elida decided to pull it out here as Coach Tabler's trying to get a set called here. Really it's been the longest possession of the game probably for both teams. Yeah, both teams have been very uh, interested in running and gunning and this is the longest possession, as you said, Josiah, for, uh, for either side. Etzcorn, spin move, up with the right hand, and no good. Elwood with the rebound. Elwood passes it off. Now McLean driving inside, and last touch by Elida. Amari Wash checking back in for the Bulldogs. Also, Andrew Elwood and Austin Mentor will head in for the Blue Jays. El Elwer, now Amari Wash guarding him. And that one in and out. So interesting to see the changes as they bring in different personnel and someone different on Elwer here defensively. Here's Etzcorn from downtown and gets it to go. Second three of the night for David Escort. Eight points here in this first quarter. Been lighting up the scoreboard. Here's Elwood taking it strong and count it. They assess. I believe it was number five. I was going to say they assess Mason Dayhill, uh, but he wasn't in the game. So, okay, the officials making the correction. So Tanner Roberts for Elida was who picked up the foul. So that will put Elwood at the line. Complete the old fashioned three point play. And at least Man's first P chicken free throw is good. Cameron Network gets his first break of the game here. I imagine he won't be sitting very long on that bench. Imagine they're gonna try and probably get him to the end of the quarter. And we'll see how that works out. Controlling the basketball, Eva Jackson and a walk. the timeline as we have a minute 17 left in the first quarter on this on the web insurance agency scoreboard and foul underneath so that's going to send the Blue Jays to the line and as we mentioned kind of seeing St. John's push the issue into the paint a little bit more trying to draw that contact because they know if they can get the call they get two free throws. Yeah they've been more aggressive here in the last about two minutes of play trying to get into that paint as you said Get a little more contact here, and if they can knock down some free throws, it cuts into this Bulldogs lead. The foul's on Evan Jackson. That's his first. Lee's free throw is good, 15 to 12. Is Elida led by as many as nine in this first quarter, and a lead down to three. As that second free throw is no good. on the final minute, and that one is going to stay with the Elida. Last touch, it was tipped by a St. John's player. Mason Dayhill, who is now actually in the game, will inbound the ball, gets it to Etzcorn. 
Now Etzcorn has it, working it around with 52 seconds left in the first quarter. And you might see him hold for final shot here. Yeah, Coach Schaefer telling his guys to spread out and hold up. Really in no rush here as Elida almost turns it over. But number four, Amari Wash pulls it back out. About 30 seconds to go here in the first quarter. Gonna say that's not part of uh, Coach Tabler's calculus is coughing up the basketball with final seconds ticking down on the clock. Wow, it's really been a fast paced quarter here. So a little Both bit teams. of a, yeah, without a doubt, a little bit of a dribbling expedition in here for uh, Amari Wash. Scoring kicked out, Cobalt has it. Now Wash driving in, four seconds, three-pointer on the way, and get the Windex! 18 to 12, Bulldogs. As we head to the second quarter, you're watching high school basketball action on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's scoreboard is brought to you by Web Insurance Agency, serving Lima and Allen County for over 100 years with offices in downtown Lima and Bluffton. And tonight's instant replay is sponsored by Simplified Flooring. We make flooring simple. Second quarter, getting ready to get started here from the Vatican and Delphi St. John's Bulldogs of Elida with an 18 to 12 lead. Patrick Campbell and Josiah Stober here with you in what has been an exciting first quarter. And Elida wasn't really sure you know, what to expect between the two teams. And Elida, I think, has, has come out and served notice that, you know, they're not going to be pushed around by the Blue Jays tonight. Yeah, absolutely. You know, both teams, fast-paced quarter there. Both teams pushing the ball. The only time it slowed down was about that last minute. Elida decides to hold the ball for the last about 50 seconds of the quarter. Um, and, and a big shot there by Amari Walsh to hit that three as time expired. But looking at the scoring for that first quarter, Amari Walsh had nine points, David Escorn had eight, and Parker Krim had one for the visiting Light of Bulldogs. And so it was Cameron Elwer with the eight points and Braden Klaus with four for Delphus St. John's. All right, Josiah, thank you very much as we are underway here in the second quarter. Elwer back out there. This is Andrew Elwood driving in. Turn around, fade away is short. And a foul going back the other way. That's going to be assessed to uh, Joel Schrader for St. John's. It's going to be his first. Well, back into the game for the Bulldogs is Zori Island and Seth Sharp both got two fouls early in that first quarter. Only played about two minutes there, so both players are back in, so got to be careful not to pick up that third one here in the first half. Yeah, yeah Zori seeing limited time because of those two fouls. Averaging around eight and a half points a contest so far here in the young season. Here's Etzcorn from downtown. That one off the rim, no good. And a foul once again. That's going to be on Parker Krim. That's going to be his first. Looks like he might have setting up it for a little bit of full court pressure here. A one, two, two. Just changing it up, seeing if St. John can break it. Like well, call a draw. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they got through there and lost the basketball, but were able to maintain possession. Andrew Elwell will inbound. Gets it in to Minter. Good defense by the Bulldogs. Trying to work it inside and able to force the turnover. Long pass, looking down court for Amari Wash and puts it up and in. Yeah, great pass there by Zori Island. Find his teammate, Amari Wash, streaking ahead of the crowd and puts in the bucket. And a foul. That's going to be the third one on Zori Island. And really, it was just kind of a feet were in the wrong place at the wrong time. and. 
Island, of course, not understanding, but if you take a look at it again on the simplified forward replay, the feet got tangled up, and it was, it just happened to be Zora Island's feet that got tangled up in it. Yeah, most times officials are going to call that, you know, even if there wasn't forced contact, that little bit of a, as you said, the feet in the wrong place, mm -hmm. they're going to call it. At first, Lee's famous recipe chicken free throw is no good. Even Jackson checking back into the game to replace Island and both free throws, no good. A minute and a half gone by in the second quarter. Eight point lead for Elida on the Web Insurance Agency scoreboard. Turn around by its corn rattles home. Yeah, it's fun picking up where he left off in the first quarter. Had those eight points and now double digits with 10. Another 7-0 run for the Bulldogs. Trying to keep it going. Here's Jackson. Off balance, knocks it down. 9-0 run for Elida. Three-pointer on the way for Andrew Elwer. No good. Rebound, Jackson. Bulldogs off and running. Double team quickly is Etzcorn. He passes it off. Amari Washer will reset the offense. And as you said earlier, St. John's really struggling from behind yeah. the arc as they did last night. Haven't been able to knock down any of these shots and it's allowed these long rebounds and lighter run. Cobalt losing the ball, driving, trying to save it, and went out of bounds. So it'll be St. John's basketball. And yeah, as we mentioned, St. John's only three of 20 from the from downtown last night, but Kalida didn't really do much of anything from downtown. So that was kind of the thing that kept St. John's into it. Uh, Elida, however, is making it work. And Mexico Financial Services time out. We will take it as well. 519 left in the second quarter. We'll be back. Welcome back. The premier sponsor tonight for the Elida Bulldogs is John Stocker, a DDS, providing dental care for high school sports fans. And if you're not a sports fan, I'm sure he'll he'll uh, fix your teeth as well. Tonight's timeouts are also brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Call 419-225-6067 or visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. Yeah, never heard Don, uh, Dr. Stalker say, oh, are you, a, are you a sports fan? And someone says no and goes, well, you get out of here. You go someplace else. Nope, I think he would <laughs> be willing to service everyone. Yeah, without a doubt. If you're not a sports fan and you're watching this on WOSN, thank you for watching. I'm sorry your remote broke. I hope that gets resolved for you here at some point <laughs> down the road. But anyway, you've settled into a terrific high school basketball game. Bulldogs on top of the Blue Jays, 24 to 12. Try to take it inside there, did Aaron Mentor. And losing the basketball. Another Blue Jays turnover. Wash back in control. He's trying to find Parker Krim down low and thought better than to pass it near Aaron Mentor. They'll reset the offense, 438 remaining in the first half. Yeah, looks like they're now trying to post up Escorn. Has a little bit of a size advantage over the smaller Blue Jay, but Matt Tabler barking out of play. Escorn driving inside and slips. And might have fallen right on the elbow. And they're going to call foul on Tice McLean. So that's his first. And uh, I was going to say, they're going to wipe down that area that's, it appears to be slippery down there. Just, yeah, it has that, that metal piece that runs all the way around this, yeah. this floor. So, you know, let alone falling on a hard 
wood floor. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you got that piece down there, so making sure they're cleaning up that area because for the safety of these players. Elbow dropping a basketball court should be avoided at all costs, especially if you value your elbows. So everyone there, you see everyone checking it out, make sure it doesn't slip. I'm sure some of the kids will be willing to jump down off the stands and help out too, if nothing else, just to make that squeaky noise on the on the floor. All right, we're back to basketball action. Eli to inbounds. Wash under the basket, gets it to Krim. Krim working against Minter. And passes it out. That's going from way downtown. That was almost from Cabo. Yeah, just outside of the, the circle there at center court, but wasn't able to knock it down. And we'll see if these Blue Jays can get some offense going. They've struggled here in this second quarter. Indeed they have. As they travel called on the Blue Jays. St. John's still looking for their first basket of the second quarter. They have been held scoreless for the last 403 of this quarter and uh, a few minutes of the first quarter well you gotta give him this lightest defense a lot of props here keeping cameron eller you know who already has eight points but it's been a very quiet eight points yeah. haven't allowed him to get on any streaks to knock down some buckets so they've done a really good job and a lot of it is they got the ball here on the offensive side, but a turnover by number four, Amari Walsh. Dueling walks here as Elida now travels. David Etzcorn leading all scorers tonight with 10 points. And it's helped stake the Bulldogs out to a 24 to 12 lead. See what the Blue Jays can do to turn it around. Here's Elwert working. Fade away is around the rim and down. First bucket of the second quarter for the Blue Jays. And another travel. Yeah, Martin Wash is going a little bit too quick there. I think he had a little bit more space than he thought yeah. he had. And Fickle saw a little bit too much movement of the feet. And the official having to give an explanation to Matt Taylor, who was, as a coach, asking for it. And a kick by Etzcorn, who will stay down here with St. John's. Blue Jays basketball, Elwer inbounds. Gets it to Minter, and we'll have another foul. Etzcorn picks up his first. Team's third. Three pointer on the way, and no. That's going with the rebound, and it has it tucked away. Nice effort trying to dive and get that one. Instead, it is out of bounds on Elida. Parker Crim's elbow just to touch the end line there. Mentor did a great job of keeping that ball alive. Not able to corral it, but eventually Krim, as you said, that elbow hits the end line and ball back to the Blue Jays. Trying to get an inside cut, and I think it's going to be a foul on Jackson Kovalt. Indeed, it will be. That's his second. And it looks like Cobalt's going to stay in. 2.44 left in the first half. And Cobalt knocks that one away, so we'll do it again. Austin Minter inbounds and does. Gets it to Elwer. Elwer cutting inside, and he will head to the line to shoot two. Amari uh, Wash picking up his first foul. Wash recently became the high man in the point total with 11 points. Now Elwer with two. Lee's famous recipe chicken free throws coming up. 
First lease free throw, no good. Cameron Elwer, typically a really good free throw shooter. This is the first one here for the Blue Jays. Blue Jays struggling from the charity stripe so far this evening. Second lease free throw on the way is up and good. All told, a low scoring second quarter here. Elida outscoring them, but only six to three. Wash slipped a little bit, trying to cut inside, passes it off to Edscorn. Now Krim has it. to Wash, guarded tightly by Austin Minter. Wash working against him, cut inside, kick back, Kovalt from downtown, no good, and out of bounds on Elida. Jay's bringing it up as we come under two minutes here in the second quarter. 24 to 15, Bulldogs on top of the Web Insurance Agency scoreboard. And Cobalt will pick up his third foul. And I think the substitution might be forthcoming here. Mason Dayhill looks ready to check in as Cam Elwer heads to the line. And this is the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken free throw. So Dayhill checks in for Koval. Meanwhile, Aaron Minter heads in. Second Lee's free throw on the way is good. Quickly back the other way. Here come the Bulldogs and Elwer with the block and the foul. Elijah was able to push the ball up quickly. And Scott St. John's a little lackadaisical getting back. And number 11 for this Eli team, Mason Dayhill. Opportunity to knock down two free throws. His first time heading into the contest. And his first lead free throw is up and good. Second lead three throw bounces in and out. And loose ball retrieved by the Blue Jays. 25-16, 92 seconds remaining in the first half. Elwer from downtown, front rim no good. Corralled by Krim for Elida. Tobler giving some instructions to his point guard here. Tell him to run a set. Looks like Elida's going with a five out. Not in any hurry. So they are spread very wide around the floor and now a trap in place. And the foul assessed to Colin Feathers. It's gonna be his second. And that is the last foul to give for the Blue Jays. So both teams will be shooting foul shots from here on out. which at least in terms of how they've been performing from the charity stripe would tip the balance in favor of Elida. Elida continuing in that five out offense here. Dayhill. Pushing inside, and he is fouled. Austin Minter picking up the foul. It's his first, and that will put Dayhill back at the line. Dayhill was one of two last time he was at the charity strike. Lee's free throw is no good. Neither team really having much success <laughs> at the free throw line. A lot of one out of two so far tonight. And there you go again. Once again, one for two. 
out to a 10 point lead, 26-16. 44 seconds to go. Three ball in the corner, good. Andrew Elwer getting in on the scoring. So they needed someone besides Cam Elwer to step up and hit some buckets and they're gonna need a lot more of that. Sixteen seconds, and a foul. Austin Mentor, his second, and that will put Dayhill at the line one more time. Lee's free throw is up and no good. So we'll probably hit the second one. <laughs> that's how it's been going here. That's that's the pattern we've established. So Austin Mentor will head to the bench. Coach Aaron Elmore making another substitution as Braden Klaus will check in. Joel Schrader will head to the bench. Lee's free throw is up and good. There we go. Eight point lead for the Bulldogs. 10 seconds remaining in the first half. Ball in the hands of Cam Elwer. Gives it up. Three ball by Klaus on the way. No good. Final seconds, won't get this one off. And it's halftime here at the Vatican and Elida in command, 27 to 19 over Delta St. John's. We will have the third quarter coming up. You're watching high school basketball action here on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's free throw sponsor, Lee's Thanks Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphi, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style, happens here. And the premier sponsor for Elida tonight, John Soccer DDS, providing dental care for high school sports fans. 27-19, Elida on top of Delphi St. John's here at the Vatican. High school boys basketball action tonight on WOSN. Patrick Hamler, Josiah Stober, and Cameron Elwer has kept the, the, uh, the Blue Jays in this one. He has 12 of their 19 points. You gotta think the second half has to look like something of getting Cam Elwer open for some shots. Yeah, he has had a, many opportunities and you gotta give these, this enlightened defense some credit. They've switched a lot of bodies on him. You know, even doubled him multiple times while as he's coming up the court, just not allowing him to get into any flow to get his shots off. But as we look for this Bulldogs team, led by Amari Wash with 11, David Escort has 10. We'll see the adjustments here now for both teams coming out of half. Zori Island back out there, and Island has been neutralized pretty well. No points tonight because he's picked up three fouls. Had two fouls within the first minute and a half of the game. I think here's Etzcourt with a nice strong take. Couldn't get it to finish on the other side. So Island has had a very quiet night, but the Bulldogs in control regardless. And that's a great start for the Blue Jays. Elwer with the triple. Well, and that all started with Elwer pushing the ball up the court. He lighted not getting back and not finding where he was in transition. And his teammate found him on a good step into a shot and he knocked it down. Here is Krim working inside, high off the glass, no good. Schrader with the rebound. Three pointer on the way by Andrew L. We're no good. Island brings it up. Here's Etzcorn. Long three is good. Yeah, that's the third three of the night for Edsker. Starting off just like he did in that first quarter, hitting two big threes then and coming here in the third and knocking down a big one for his Bulldogs. 13 points for him and Seth Sharp also having some foul problems. He picks up his third foul. And he's gonna stay in the contest for the moment. Although even Jackson is ready to go. Here's Elwer, that shot around the rim and out. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
That's Gorn taking it strong, turn around, no good. Right there, and sharp with the rebound, but foul against Krim, and that's gonna be on Elwer, his second. You see Krim using that size and his strength, making it difficult for this Blue Jays team to box him out. Goes up against the ball and draws some contact and gives his Bulldogs another possession. So we're gonna have a stoppage here while they wipe the floor down. Elida has led all the way. They took a five nothing lead and have been on top for the entirety of the contest, but the Blue Jays down eight. And you feel like, you know, if two solid possessions are right back in this and could possibly turn it around and take the lead. Got to start hitting some shots though. Long inbounds pass. Corralled by Wash. Wash directing traffic at center court. Coming up on two minutes gone by in the third quarter. Three ball, top of the key, short. And Krim trying to save that one. And our cameraman, Zach Keith, retrieving the basketball. just hasn't been on the court a whole lot tonight to get into the flow of the offense and leaves that three a little short there, but Krim does a great job of nice. battling, but a good good play there by Blue Jays, just haven't been able to knock it down. Nice pass inside, couldn't finish. Here's a wash from three, got it. Bulldogs have had runs of 7-0 and 9-0 in this contest. They're at a 6-0 run right now as that three-pointer missed. Wash with the rebound. And then the foul committed by Austin Minter, and that is his third. Well, and I think Coach Tabler will live with those shots that the Blue Jays are taking. You know, any, anyone but Cameron Naylor taking those long shots, he will live with and Elida doing a good job of clearing up the defensive boards and now we have an opportunity to extend this 11 point lead here. And you know as long as the Blue Jays are struggling from downtown it's going to be something as you said Coach Sabler you let you take those shots until you prove that you're going to be able to hit them and hit them consistently we'll let you take those. Got a foul underneath that's going to be on Braden Claus his second. That's a third team foul already for the Blue Jays as we haven't had three minutes go by here in the third quarter. Jackson gets the inbounds. And Koval to Krim underneath. Krim working underneath and has the ball poked away and the Blue Jays forced a turnover. Coming up from behind but Kloss able to Keep possession of it, loses the basketball. Well, I'm sorry, lost his footing and call for the travel. I think that area of the court might still be a little slippery. We've seen a couple guys go down in that area. Well, it's definitely warm here in this gymnasium, yeah. so that might be playing into some of the humidity here tonight, causing, causing some slickness on multiple areas of the court here as the, uh, what do we call that, the, uh, Floor boy <laughs> is getting his work sure. out tonight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's probably thinking, I'm usually not this busy. I usually have more time to just watch the game. It's 60 degrees in December in Ohio. Everyone's confused. <laughs> so they'll get that taken care of. And we are back to it. Koval working inside, high off the glass, no good. Krim had a rebound for a moment, but Kloss comes up with it. 11 point lead for Elida, looking to cut into that is Tice McLean, and he does so. Those are the type of buckets St. John's needs to crawl themselves back into this game, see if they can get some easy ones they did on that last possession. That's Gorn cutting inside, and then he is fouled. That's gonna be the third on Colin Feathers. 
So the Blue Jays are starting to rack up fouls and not a lot of points from anyone other than Cam Elwer tonight. So the game plan for Matt Tabler and the Elida Bulldogs has been successful thus far. Krim has it after it getting tipped. And now he works inside. That's going all alone. Corner three, no. McLean quickly bringing it up the floor, numbers briefly, and right into the hands of Jackson Kovalt. Kovalt going back the other way to Etzcorn, taking it strong up with two hands, can't get there. Krim with the rebound. He can't get it to go. Jackson's tip no good, and controlled by the Blue Jays. Rebound corralled there by Grant Ulm. Three-pointer by McLean is short. Well, we continue to see those threes, but you know, I don't know if it's just the pace of the game. As we get a timeout here, and I think Coach Shabler kind of sees that, but a lot of short shots, I think some tired legs out there. Metzger Financial Services timeout will take it as well. 3.23 remaining in the third quarter. You're watching high school basketball on WOSN. Welcome back tonight's scoreboard sponsor is Web Insurance Agency, serving Lima and Allen County for more than 100 years with offices in downtown Lima and Bluffton. And tonight's instant replay is sponsored by Simplified Flooring. We make flooring simple. We talk about the flooring quite a bit as far as keeping it dry, keeping it non-slippery. But no uh, home court advantage so far tonight for the Blue Jays. Elida with a nine-point lead, 33-24 to 24 is the... Uh, Cam Elwer show has been pretty good. He has 15 points, 15 of the Blue Jays, 24. And he's had a couple more opportunities to get some good looks at the basket, but the rest of the St. John's players just haven't been able to knock down shots tonight so far. Yeah, and it's allowed Elida to just focus on Cameron Elwer. And we've mentioned it before, 15 points leads the game in point total, but just hasn't got a whole lot of help from his teammates to put some of that pressure off of him. Now Elida going to some of the guys who haven't scored a whole lot with the exception of Wash. Wash with 14 points tonight for the Bulldogs. The rest of the guys combined on the floor have three. Jackson has two and Seth Sharp has one. Drive inside, that one is slapped away from Tanner Roberts. Loose basketball, Elwer controls it into the hands of Aaron Minter. And now let's see what the Blue Jays can make happen here with 2.34 remaining in the third quarter. Trailing by nine, Elwer almost triple team. Three ball in the corner, got it! Andrew Elwer with his second three of the night. Cuts into this Bulldogs leading out here with six points. Just like that, it's a two possession game. Pass inside to Krim and Elwer all over him. The Elida fans wanting a foul and they'll get it. that type of player, just that hustle player. You saw it there, was double teamed by Aaron Eller and by Aaron Minter, but was able to just stay under control, made a good drop step, went up through some contact, an opportunity now here for, for a three-point play. Parker Krim at the line to finish off the three-point play for the Lee's free throw. Off the back rim, no good. Eight point lead. Andrew Elwer working, gets it to Cam. Three ball, it's gonna roll off the top of the backboard. Cam and Elwer not having the shooting night as we've come to expect. We've seen so many times last year. Great take there by Zori wow. Island. Zori Island. Allow me to introduce myself. His first points of the night, and that is the fourth foul on Austin Minter. A 
Lee's free throw is up and good. Three point play for the Bulldogs. Now an 11 point lead, 38-27. Nice drive inside and swatted out by Krim. Krim coming off for a well-deserved rest <laughs> right for the remainder of this quarter. Doing a little bit of everything, especially on the offensive glass. May not get it, but forcing this Blue Jay team to really focus and box him out. And on the defensive side, a swat there. Feathers with the basketball, final minute and a half of this third quarter. Spin move, Elwood working inside, hoop, and the harm. Amari Wash picks up his second foul. Seventeen points for Elwood. This Lee's recipe, chicken free throw, good. decides to do if they go back to that five out motion. They've done that a couple times here to end the quarters. It might be a little bit early, but one minute and 10 seconds to go here in that third quarter. That's going long, three ball, no good. Almost shot that one from Landek. <laughs> Elwer kicks it out to the other, got it. Knocking down some big shots, some big points for their team now. Right at 35 seconds. Decided to not force anything here. See if they can get the last shot. St. John's in a 6-0 run. See if they can keep Elida off the board here. Maybe an opportunity to put some more points on if they can force a turnover. Island, though, going to make that difficult. Looks like they're going to hold for a last shot. Final 10 seconds of the third quarter. Island makes his move. Four seconds. Step back three. Got it. Zori Island enters in the third quarter and hits a three-pointer, giving the Bulldogs an eight-point lead. 41-33. We're back after this on WOSN. Welcome back to our free throw sponsor tonight, Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphas, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style happens here. And tonight's timeouts are brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Call 419-225-6067 or visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. Fourth quarter ready to get started here from the Vatican, Delphi St. John's High School, 41-33 Elida on top of the St. John's Blue Jays. Patrick Hamler and Josiah Stober here bringing you the call from high above center court here at Delphi St. John's High School. And St. John's has tried to get some offense going. They've been able to hit a few more shots in the third quarter, but as we mentioned at the break, Elida has just had an answer every single time. Yeah, the second time tonight at the end of the first quarter, a big hit by Maury Wash, the three as time expired. And now we look here as Cameron Elward goes strong on the first possession. But as you said, a big answer there by Zori Island at the end of the third quarter to extend their lead. Cam Elwood with 20 points and it's a six point lead. A wash with the answer. Back and forth we go here in the last couple of minutes. As I just said, Elida has led the entirety of the game, and that's going to be the third on Amari Wash. Wash leading the Elida attack with 17 points tonight. David Edscore chipping in 13, and 
Zori Islands had foul trouble for most of the game. He had two fouls very quickly and has sat for most of the contest, but has come in, put in six points in the third quarter to uh, really help out this Bulldog attack. And a nice strong take there. And the offensive foul on McLean, his second. Yeah, Seth Sharp standing in there tough, seeing that McLean was driving right at him, takes the charge. You know, for Seth Sharp, has three fouls, so mm -hmm. that was a big play by him, keeping his feet set, gaining that position ahead of time. And now Elida, you know, let's see if they can continue to just extend this lead here. Number of guys on both teams with three fouls or more. Here's Wash again from downtown. That one no good. Krim there underneath getting the rebound, working against three Blue Jays, and Cole for the travel. I thought maybe Austin Mentor was gonna pick up his fifth foul, but instead they call the walk on Elida. And Krim once again just reading that rebound off of the shot, and you know, I'd like to see that big man not take that extra dribble, yep. and just go straight up, especially with his size. Elworth from downtown, off the rim, no good. Cam gets the rebound. Now Mentor working underneath, and gets it to go. Good take there by Aaron Mentor. Saw the determination to just keep going at it able to finish. Now St. John's has to get a stop here. They got to start stringing some of these stops together to really cut into this lead. Strong take inside by Sharp. Doesn't go. Rebound. St. John's. Opportunity here. Now we're all alone in the corner and uh, no good. That would have been a big shot for St. John's. Would have cut the lead to four. Would have been about the closest St. John's has been since, well, really since early in the contest. Island working, ball tipped. Elwood got his hands on it, and Cam bringing it up, and then Wash slaps it away, and it will stay down here with the Blue Jays. So the closest that the Blue Jays have been. What we'll talk about here in a minute. Metzger Financial Services timeout. 528 remaining in the fourth. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Well, hey, did you know TV44 WOSN are all part of Axe Ministries, and we are a nonprofit organization, and we cannot bring contests like that without your financial support. We are in the midst of our annual campaign on our way towards $175,000. Won't you consider making a donation today? You can do it right there from the comfort of your own couch. Go to axeministries.com forward slash donate and uh, make a donation, but do it by the end of the year or it won't count. I'm kidding, we'll take your money after the beginning of the year too, but uh, if you would help us out, we can continue to bring you terrific high school basketball contests like this one. 528 remaining in the fourth quarter, seven point lead for the Blue Jays. And as I was gonna say before the break, the closest that St. John's has really been able to get to Elida all night, they were only down three towards the end of the first quarter. Ever since then, there's a nice touch pass Tip in by Elwer, couldn't get it to finish though. Uh, ever since then, it's been Elida able to keep six, seven point lead and further on out. They've really been able to keep uh, the Blue Jays at, at arm's length. Yeah, every time the Blue Jays have made a real run, like you said earlier, they just, it's just this Elida team finds an answer. It's a big shot. And, and call for travel. Yeah, turn over on the baseline, yep. yep. So that's stuff like that. And Elida hasn't done much of that tonight, but those are the things that the Blue Jays have to take advantage of and try and string some possessions and points together. So foul on David Etzkorn, that's his second. That's team second. Blue Jays have only had one situation where they've scored 
back-to-back -back buckets without Elida having an answer for it. It's only happened one time tonight. I'm sorry, twice. It's happened twice in this game. And it's going to have to happen a couple more times if they want to have a chance to win this one and another unforced turnover there by Delphi St. John's. Well, that's kind of been the story of the night so far is the St. John's team not being able to capitalize, you know, on these possessions to try to cut into this Elida lead. A turnover there by Cameron Elwer, you know, trying to pass it out to the shooter on the outside and just goes out of bounds. So um, it seems like every single time this happens, Elida comes through and answers. Wash on the run, getting the basketball. Now into the hands of Jackson Covalt. You know, interesting to see how Elida plays this final five minutes if they slow down, if they won more set plays. Saw that really only a couple of times in the first three quarters from uh, Matt Taylor. Looks like Coach Taylor calls a timeout. And he's going to take a Mesker Financial Services timeout. We will as well. 4.51 remaining in the fourth quarter. It's a seven-point lead for the Bulldogs. You're watching high school basketball action on WOSN. Back to action here from the Vatican. 4.51 remaining in the fourth quarter. Seven point lead for Elida. Bulldogs have the basketball. Inbounds to Koval, your Story Island running up. Charity Stripe shot. Bounce around the rim and no good. Elwood with the rebound. Really not a good shot there by Zori Island. Had a hand in his face. Elwood takes it up strong. That's also around the rim and out. All alone is Eva Jackson underneath and gets the easy two. Eva Jackson found himself all alone under the basket. A great pass there by his teammate. And almost losing it there was Austin Mentor. And the ball out of bounds, it will stay with St. John's. Substitutions now, Seth Sharp. David Etzcorn checking back in. Jackson and Kovold. <laughs> Eva Jackson and Jackson Koval, just to clear that up, we'll have a seat. <laughs> Andrew Elwood inbound. Into the hands of Mentor, coming up on the halfway point of this fourth quarter. 46-37 lead on the Red Insurance Agency scoreboard for the Bulldogs. And Aaron Mentor thought about putting up the three. This one is up and good for Austin Minter. His first bucket of the night, a big three, and then a turnover by Elida. That gets a good reaction from this crowd that has wanted some reasons to cheer tonight. The Vatican has been very quiet. I mean, I imagine the Vatican in Rome stays pretty quiet all the time. The Vatican here in Delphus, uh, so if, if it's really quiet, then that's probably not good for Blue Jay basketball, but they want something to cheer about here. This might be a reason the Mentor is blocked coming inside Parker Krim with the nice defensive catch up. And I've said it before, but you really got to give it to this Elida defense. They're really yeah. getting after it tonight, making it difficult for this Blue Jay team. And that will not count. I know it's nice, and <laughs> if we're playing horse, it counts, but yes, it, would. it uh, touched the top of the backboard, so that one will not count. you got to think, man, it's been so hard to get three pointers to drop tonight. You really want that one to go, but it is a light of basketball, six-point lead for the Bulldogs. Wash, nice spin move, fall away, nice defense there. Is, Mentor playing a tough defense with four fouls. Good spin move there, but see Coach Tabler not really wanting that as the option on offense, especially just three minutes left in the game. Elwood oh, with a nice take. Finger roll, floating that one in, and it's a four-point Elida lead. Now Etzcorn driving in, and a blocking foul called on Elwer. His third. Big snap, wanted a charge on that. Not 
sure Cameron really established his position there, but he's a little slow getting up. I think took, took some of that contact as the falling bodies were going down. You might take a look at that on a simplified flooring instant replay, and yeah, it's yeah, it's one of those. I don't think the feet were set, and so many of those, it's just kind of a just kind of a judgment call. Metzger Financial Services timeout on the floor, 2:45 remaining in the game. Four point lead for Elida. We'll be back. Quarterback 46-42, Elida. Blue Jay is able to cut this down to a four-point lead. And they have been close all night. The lead for Elida, however, has been as many as 12. But the Blue Jays have been able to get it to about the six to seven-point neighborhood and haven't been able to get any closer. Now within four. And I think we're just about ready to go here. They'll whistle it in. Elida basketball, they'll inbound under the basket. Amari Wash has it. Leading the Bulldog attack tonight with 17 points. Cam Elwood pacing the Blue Jay attack tonight with 22. Now Etzcorn has it, top of the key. Etzcorn with 13 points tonight. Now back into the hands of Wash, and you see the Bulldogs gonna slow down the attack a little bit. They don't have to rush it. Two possession game. And poked away by Mentor, and he slides out of bounds. Like Mentor is a little shaking up down there. It's sliding right across that metal plate. Yeah. Going out of bounds. Probably doesn't feel too great on those knees. Has a sleeve there, and my guess is the uh, the skin impacted there in between the sleeve. And hey, look, if you've done that, that everyone grimaced at that. That's not fun. Yeah, it looks like <laughs> there might be some, at least the officials checking them out, might be some blood or. Official must not see anything that warrants him coming yeah. out of the game. They're gonna wipe this down again. And you know, if you if you looked at this game and you look at the scoreboard, if you, if you did look at the scoreboard and you saw Elida's been hitting really good shots, they played really great defense. You think, man, Elida's probably up pretty big on this. Then you bring the scoreboard into it. It's only a four-point game. The Blue Jays have done a tremendous job with coming back, staying with Elida, and now within striking distance with under two minutes to play. Yeah, they haven't, you know, really got down on themselves when they, they might have bloomed that lead up to, you know, six to ten. But we see here is St. John's kind of going to that trapping defense now as a shot by Escorn. No good. Front rim. Rebound by Mentor. And now chance for Delphi St. John's to cut it to one with a three. No. Mentor getting the rebound. Into the hands of Cam Elwer. Kicks it in. Andrew Elwer. A one-point lead for Elida. The Blue Jays have come all the way back. Just like the JV contest earlier tonight. Elida with a lead. Blue Jays came back to win it by one and a foul. As that will be five on Austin Minter. Yeah, Andrew Elwer has had three threes here in the second half. 12 points on the night, cuts this Bulldog lead to one. And are starting to see this St. John's team and their crowd come alive, coming down to the last 105. Seth Sharp to inbounds. That's going with the basketball as we come up on a minute to go. Wash passes it to Island and Again, Elida holding the lead, and they will opt for the foul as Andrew Elwer fouls. That is his first. And I believe that is the fourth on the Blue Jays. So they had one to give, and they give it. Well, we'll see if 
if any strategy comes into play for this Blue Jay team. Neither team's really shot free throws very well on the night, so it could be a situation where it fouls somebody who doesn't shoot free throws as well to try to get the ball back. Indeed, and Elwer <laughs> committing the foul and kind of throwing body blows there too a little bit. That was, so Aaron Elwer was instructing him on, there's a certain way that you're supposed to do this. It's intentional, but it's not intentional. <laughs> so that'll send Zori Island to the line. St. John's on an eight to two run. To climb back into this one. Lee's fans must be chicken. Free throw on the way and good. Forty-seven, forty-five. Highlight at the line again. Lee's free throw is good. Strokes them both. And timeout on the floor. 50.8 seconds remaining. It's a three-point lead for Elida, and you start to look back, and of course, it's it's hard to look at any one particular thing and go, this is what the difference was. But yeah, I tell you what, you look at you look at the three-point shooting tonight for the Blue Jays, and again, I'm not saying they can't win. That it's only a one-possession game. You look at the free throws that have been an issue, and you think, man, there have been a lot of points quote unquote left on the table for the Blue Jays tonight that would have this game a much different complexion than what it is right now. Yeah, haven't shot really well from behind the arc and we say that, you know, they have seven threes on the night, uh, but you know, how many have they shot? You know, and they've shot right. quite a few um, tonight, but what you want is they're starting to get hot here at the end. Right, yeah, <laughs> you know, and that's yeah. when you want to start picking your shots. If you're not shooting well, you want to shoot better at the end. And um, we're starting to see that here as Andrew Eller has really kind of become that second player here for St. John's. Put some buckets in the net. So we'll see what Aaron Eller has drawn up here in this timeout. Better than their three for 20 performance last night, but still probably not what Coach Eller wants to see. And now with 38 seconds left and that Elida defense and Coach Elwer is going to take a timeout. Metro Financial Services timeout. We'll take it as well. 36.8 to go. You're watching high school basketball action on WOSN. John Soccer DDS is tonight's premier sponsor for the Elida Bulldogs, providing dental care for high school sports fans. And our scoreboard tonight brought to you by Web Insurance Agency, serving Lima and Allen County for more than 100 years with offices in downtown Lima and Bluffton. Three-point lead for Elida, 48-45. Blue Jays with the basketball, 36.8 seconds remaining. Blue Jays down by as many as 12 tonight. And a three-pointer away from tying this one up. Austin Mentor driving inside. Turn around, jump shot is gonna be short. Krim with the bucket and the foul committed. Both Mentors in on it and that is gonna be on Austin Mentor and that will be his fifth foul. Well, this is where those free throw shooting comes into play here. Krim steps to the line. Only well, we made one free throw on the night. Well, this is where you know. This is where you see you know where you win ball games. Right. Free throw line. Yeah. And a little different this time because there's no more one and one. It's shooting two now. So we'll see how that, if the dynamic changes, how it changes, what that looks like here. Parker Krim at the line, and the least free throw recipe. Free throw is good. Backspin on that shot as it hit the rim once and spun up in the air and went right back through the net. That's like that's a home home court roll. That's something you expect to see at the field house. Second least free throw is up and good. Bulldogs getting it done at the foul line. They have hit their last four, I believe, four foul shots. So able to push this out to a four point lead. So full timeout now, discussion. Your coach Elwer, are you, 
Are you looking for a three-pointer? Are you trying to drive in, maybe get some contact, maybe get it the old-fashioned way? Yeah, well, I think they've got to find a way for Cameron Elwer to at least have the ball in his hands. You know, you want him to have the ability to see if he can attack the rim, come with some contact. If they do double, then kick it out to one of their shooters, you know, especially with Andrew Elwer being so hot here yeah. in the later half of this um, second half here. Um, but you want him to be able to have the ball and make the decisions for you. And for Coach Tabler, you know, it's just kind of instructing his players, you know, how are we going to limit Cameron Elwer? Right. Elwer with 22 points tonight has definitely been the bulk. In fact, almost half of the Blue Jays offense tonight. He has 22 of their 45 points. Andrew Elwer to inbound. 24 seconds remaining. Elwer brings it across, guarded by Wash, and he is fouled. He might have had two fouls to give. And they give the first. That is the fourth on Wash. Wash with 17 points tonight for Elida. Now the inbound, 20 seconds, ball in Elwer's hands. Camp passes it off, Aaron Mitchell for three, no. Nice box out by Seth Sharp and then he's fouled. Yeah, fundamental box out there by Seth Sharp. The ball could have probably bounced if he would have let it. Did a good job of all Elida players, you know, putting a body on their man. And now an opportunity, as we said before, is to hit the couple of these free throws. Game's pretty much over. So two free throws here would make it a two possession, I'm sorry, a three possession game. And as you said, Josiah, that might be, uh, that might be enough. First lead's three throw is good. Last field goal for Eli to gave them 46 points. Everything from here on out has been free throws. Knocks them both down, seven in a row. Lee's free throw is good, 52-45. Final seconds, Elwood takes it in strong, gets the bucket and the timeout. Elwood with 24 points, Metzger Financial Services timeout. We'll take it as well, four seconds left. We're back after this. Four seconds to go, that one inbounds and then a foul. And that was a situation there where you're, you're primed to, to foul immediately, but you know, you almost forced a turnover there. So that will send David Etzcorn to the line. Elida has been clutch from the charity stripe here in the last couple of minutes. Their last six, now their last seven points have been from the Lee's free throw line. Second Lee's free throw is up and it is good. Final seconds are gonna tick off this one and they won't throw it up. And Elida. Heads into the Vatican and gets a win over the Blue Jays, 54 to 47. And a lot of tremendous performances all the way around for the Bulldogs. Amari Wash pacing the attack with 17 points. But I'll tell you what, Elida's defense showed up tonight. And that's where it started is their defense. You know, Coach Tabler had a great plan to keep Cameron Elwood, you know, who still finished with 24 points. Great performance by him but they were quiet 24 points, if you can say they're quiet. Yeah. Uh, but you saw it tonight as they had a plan. He rotated guys on him all night, made it difficult, made other uh, players from St. John's try to beat him, and they just weren't able to do that tonight. Elwood is responsible for 36 of the Blue Jays' 47 points tonight. Andrew Elwood chipping in 12 as well. And at the end, Elida just too much defense and tremendous at the foul line toward the end. Their last seven points all from the charity 
Charity Stripe. That is going to do it for us here. Once again, the final 54-47. Elida getting the win over Delta St. John's. Want to thank Megan Sherrick and Zach Keith for uh, helping us put this together, as well as Nick Fraley back at the ranch. That is going to do it. Once again, the final 54-47 for Josiah Stober and our entire WOSN staff. I'm Patrick Hamler saying so long, everyone, from Delphus.